Hello and welcome to my channel. This winter landscape was done with a black and white pencil and I'm going to show you how I did it. I'm also going to need to say a few words about the materials but I'll get to that later. So let's go. So here I already started working on the background. I'm sorry I lost a couple of minutes of footage at the beginning but you didn't really miss much because I only did a very very simple sketch and uh, indicated where the stream will be at the bottom there but after that I simply started shading the background here where the sky will be. So about the materials I'm working on a 9 times 11 inches uh, sandpaper it's a 1000 grit sandpaper and it's a textured surface that allows you to add a few more details than on regular paper. So I wanted to experiment with this a little bit. And as for the pencils, I'm using two black pencils and two white pencils. You can see here I'm starting to blend with my finger and if you're confused why I'm able to do this, it's because this surface be behaves differently than regular paper. <clears throat> so it's a little bit easier to do this. So the, uh, the pencils I'm using are Faber-Castell Polychromos black and white pencil and the Kohinoor Gioconda black pencil and the Kohinoor Gioconda white pencil. So why am I using two different types of pencils? Uh, because these Kohinoor pencils are softer and crumblier, easier to blend, almost like charcoal. I don't really know their exact composition to be honest and the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils are obviously a lot harder and they are better for drawing finer details. So here I started shading the background where the sky will be and of course in front of it I'm going to have a tree and a lot of branches. But before I start working on those obviously I need to do the background first and uh, I have to do a lot of blending here and you can see my the background color of my paper is gray and uh, it's kind of a mid-gray I suppose and it's neither too dark nor too, nor too light but the color that I'm getting now the tone rather that I'm getting now is kind of grayish it's kind of like a really light gray so it's not completely white which is okay I kind of wanted it that way because I want to have a slightly uh, darker foggier sky well not dark but uh, obviously not bright either so I'm gonna start working on the tree now <clears throat> and for this uh, I'm going to use that harder pencil the Faber-Castell Polychromos black colored pencil so we'll see how that goes Um, the thing is that this will be a very complex drawing because of all the boughs, branches and twigs. Uh, there's no way around it. I'm going to have to draw almost every single one. And the reason why I'll have to draw almost every single one is because this is a slightly closer view of this tree. And if I were drawing a tree as seen from a distance, obviously I would be able to simplify things a little bit. But now there's no way around it. Now I'm going to have to draw all of these branches, especially the larger ones. Uh, with the smaller twigs and things like that, I can maybe simplify things a little bit and hope that a few suggestions here and there will trick the eye of the viewer that they're looking at something really really complex but uh, with this uh, system of larger branches I really have no choice I have to draw a lot of them <clears throat> and I have to do it a bit more slowly and more carefully so that I, I would uh, get their shape to look right. Now this bottom part here which I'm also covering with, with some white pencil needs to be a bit lighter I'm going to start with this softer pencil here at the bottom, but I'm also going to add some Faber-Castell white pencil on top of that because that one is a little bit more permanent and opaque. So 
uh, I'm thinking this area will remain lighter because I want this snow here to be lighter than the sky. Now here in the background I'm going to be adding some vague shapes of trees or tree canopies in the background. Here luckily I don't have to draw any details so it's kind of like a um, foggy, slightly foggy winter scene where these uh, objects in the background are very vague, barely visible. So you can see that I don't really have much contrast between uh, those shapes and the background or the sky, but I want it that way. I uh, want them to be kind of looming through the, through the fog. And uh, the, the, you can barely discern their shape. Now obviously some of them are going to appear closer than others, which means that uh, here and there I'm going to add a few details, making some suggestions of shapes of branches and tree trunks and things like that. Anyway, moving on with the main tree, or my main subject, if you will, which is in the foreground. <clears throat> Now I'm going to start adding some more value and detail to it. Uh, one of the best things about this scene and one of the most captivating things about this scene that I'm going to try to achieve is the contrast between the elements in the foreground and the background. Uh, the background is going to be very vague, blurry and undefined very little contrast, very little um, uh, details of darker value, very little texture. Whereas the elements in the foreground are going to be a lot darker, uh, are way more textured and a lot more detailed. So I'm hoping that this contrast will create some sort of a tension between the uh, between the foreground and the background, which will allow the viewer to focus on those elements which I wanted to bring out. Uh, so basically the blurrier background will allow these well-defined darker elements in the foreground to really pop out. Now you can see that this tree, I'm deliberately leaving some white spaces here. So you will see that this tree will have some snow on it. Uh, some of the branches are covered with a little bit of snow, but that's not all because even some parts of the tree trunk will have a little bit of snow on them. Like maybe uh, it was uh, snowing and uh, the tree, the rough surface of the tree caught some of those snowflakes. So to further define those white areas here and there, I'm going to add some touches of white colored pencil. But I think uh, this will not be enough, or at least uh, this is not how I plan to go about it. Because here I'm going to have to be a little bit clever uh, with this snow. Because <clears throat> some of these bits of snow and these uh, snowflakes uh, they they uh, are creating such a fine texture that it's uh, really hard for me to imitate that. And the reason why it's such a fine texture is because the surface of the tree, the tree bark is so rough, so it'll be creating a lot of these smaller white spaces where there's a, there are tiny bits of snow. So it's very difficult for me to imitate that texture if I try to draw all of these small tiny white bits uh, one by one. So that's not what I'm going to do. Like I said, I'm going to try to be a little bit clever and I'm going to try to do it the easier way by allowing my pencils to work for me. And when I say that I, uh, I like to allow my pencils to work for me, that means that I like to allow the pencils to create their own textures to create their own details, to create some kind of a random and uh, spontaneous illusion of detail 
that I otherwise wouldn't be able to create if I were trying to do it deliberately. So how am I going to try to do it? I'm just going to go around some of these white spaces, leaving some unpredictable random white shapes here and there, and hoping that they will end up looking like uh, small amounts of snow which was caught on the rough uh, surface of the tree, on the rough surface of the tree bark. And you can see now how my plan is coming along and you can see whether I'm uh, achieving that look and I think it's going well because I have a lot of these smaller white spaces which are kind of unpredictable here and there and they're just suggestions uh, where maybe there's a little bit of snow so they're kind of giving a suggestion to the viewer uh, that these are some parts of the tree trunk or tree bark which are kind of uh, maybe popping out a little bit that's why they caught a little bit of that snow so it, it, these are just suggestions of that uneven irregular shape of the tree and uh, in my opinion it's better to do this just by allowing the pencil to work for you. Um, of course I'm going to be refining that a little bit with a white colored pencil adding a few lighter details here and there as needed but uh, most of the work is going to be done most of the, the that snow is going to be achieved by leaving those lighter spaces. Now here, as you can see, I'm starting to work a little bit on this mid-ground area. Or you can call it the background area, I'm not really sure, but um, I'm going to add some tree trunks here. So initially I uh, drew some darker shapes in the background. And these are barely defined, barely visible. And these uh, tree trunks that I'm drawing now, they're going to appear lighter than the tree trunk in the foreground but I still want them to be a little bit more defined because I'm gonna have them kind of fade into that group of trees or maybe not fade but kind of merge with that group of trees in the background so what I want to do is I want to create a feeling of depth like <clears throat> some of those trees in the background are so far away and uh, so blurry that you can't really discern individual shapes while some of the trees or tree trunks which are closer to us they are a bit more uh, visible it's a little bit easier to recognize their shapes that's why I'm going to draw a few of these tree trunks here and maybe even a few branches here and there I kind of have to be careful not to overdo it because I don't want to create a background that will be too distracting but a few suggestions of these tree trunks will probably do the trick. So I'm just uh, dragging my pencil here in the background adding a few random shapes where there would be some branches and tree trunks and things like that. So I made that part just a little bit darker with just a little bit more texture and detail and I'm kind of hoping that it's not too distracting and that it will look like a group of trees. Now it's probably time to talk a little bit about these branches here uh, in the midground and the, the branches which are going to be a part of this of, of this tree in the foreground because <clears throat> this will be the most complex part of this drawing process. I'm going to have to draw a lot of them and uh, they will kind of be overlapping many 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 branches, boughs and twigs and it's uh, not really easy for me to explain how I'm doing this but I think um, I'm going to try to explain it like this. With these smaller ones, you see, what you want to do is you want to allow uh, your pencil to kind of wiggle a little bit, creating some unpredictable shapes uh, where the, the line kind of breaks and 
swerves a little bit to one side or the other because this is how branches grow and then you want to have some smaller branches or thinner branches growing out of those uh, main branches and in order uh, to be able to create that appearance you, you have to make sure that they kind of taper so that the ones which are uh, that they taper near the end and that the ones which are growing out, the smaller ones are always thinner uh, than the branches that they're growing out of. All right, uh, that way you can make sense out of these things because if the branch which is growing out of another branch appears thicker, uh, then it won't make a lot of sense to the viewer. And I'm kind of hoping that my explanation makes sense to you. Here, as you can see, I'm just adding a little bit of snow on on these boughs here. I, I want to <clears throat> stay consistent with that appearance of a snowy winter tree. So like I said, with these uh, slightly smaller branches, you want to create that tapering shape uh, which uh, kind of bends and grows every which way and uh, there's no easy way for me to explain uh, how how exactly you should draw these uh, draw these shapes because even I'm not really sure about some of the shapes I draw sometimes I draw some shapes of branches that I'm happy with sometimes I'm not, not particularly happy with some of the shapes I achieved so I don't know, I, I guess it just takes practice. Uh, I'm not saying that mine are great, but I, I think I am getting a little bit better. And I think it just takes practice and that um, you'll just go with the shapes you like and uh, just modify or erase the shapes you don't like, I suppose. And another thing that I found helpful was that uh, when I draw a shape of a branch, I sometimes go back and I make some parts of it thicker simply by kind of drawing the other way and controlling the amount of pressure I'm using. Uh, so that's the approach that you can use for some of these smaller and thinner branches but for some of these larger thicker branches you can't really draw them by using a single line you have to draw an entire shape and you have to start with its outline. So if you have a reference photo and I'm gonna uh, put the reference photo in the description if you want to check it out. <coughs> if you have a reference photo and if, if you want to kind of stick to it uh, you might want to pay attention to the exact shape of those larger boughs and branches because if you get those right, maybe uh, the smaller ones won't really matter that much. But the problem uh, with these larger ones is that, like I said, you'll have to draw the entire shape by drawing the outline first and then shading it properly uh, to give it some depth and volume, uh, which is not really what you have to do with these smaller ones. With these smaller ones, you can just draw lines of varying shapes and thickness. Uh, with the larger ones, obviously, you have to put in a little bit more effort and you have to be a little bit more patient and careful. Uh, you don't have to stick to your reference photos uh, when you when it comes to drawings like this. Uh, and landscapes in general, I like to improvise a lot because if I try to stick to the reference, it would be very frustrating and kind of boring, to be honest. So I just look at the reference photos uh, to get uh, a general idea and then I kind of go and do my own thing uh, trying to uh, find uh, the best way to I don't know improvise approximate and simplify what I see so that I can uh, convey that uh, similar idea to the viewer so here as you can see I'm moving down this large tree trunk and uh, drawing some small uh, lighter detail on it uh, details on it and um, I'm adding some details using a white colored pencil. <clears throat> in some parts of the tree trunk I want a little bit less texture than in others. Maybe I want some parts of the tree trunk to be fairly dark uh, where you can't really make out any shapes and some of these other parts maybe I want them to be a little bit more textured so that I can uh, draw a little bit more attention. 
and uh, this is usually the case with those parts of the tree which are supposed to pop out and which are where you're supposed to feel like they're bulging out. I also added a little bit of snow on some of these branches in the background in order to make them appear a bit more three-dimensional and I think that kind of made them pop out of the background a little bit more and uh, just made them look a little bit better I think. Anyway I have to move on uh, with the uh, branches here going to the other side. Now I've done quite a few drawings like this one but um, those drawings were usually of trees that had some foliage on them although I have done some uh, drawing, drawings of trees with bare branches but uh, in general I feel like drawings with fo uh, or trees with foliage are a little bit easier for me to draw because then I, ha I don't have to draw every single branch or twig. I can just draw a lot of foliage and I feel like uh, drawing foliage is a bit easier and faster for me. Or maybe I just have an easier or better technique for it. I'm not really sure. Uh, but be that as it may, uh, here as you can see I'm making quite a lot of progress and adding quite a few of these smaller branches and twigs. And the trick here is to be a little bit more patient because if you just draw a bunch of lines it won't look good at all. You have to make sense out of the, the, those lines. You have to uh, connect them into something that makes sense. Now one of the great things about these branches um, and their shape and the, the, the overall shape of the tree actually is how it adds to the composition of the drawing because uh, the, the branches or boughs rather growing out to the side and kind of stretching all the way to the other side of this scene uh, they allow you to create some contrast with the background not just uh, with the upper part of the background where we have some sky and some distant trees but as you will see uh, with the lower part of the background because some of these branches are kind of hanging down and you will see that they will be kind of stretching all the way into the lower right part of the scene which I think is great because it gives you an opportunity to really um, push the background back and uh, make the main subject which is my tree pop out and stand out against that background creating a lot of contrast. Now here in the foreground uh, we have some kind of a stream and uh, I'm gonna have to work around it first uh, with a white colored pencil and you can see how I'm making this irregular almost jagged shape that's because uh, the uh, the stream is flowing towards our point of view and these curves, these small curves because it's kind of winding, they appear as these small jagged shapes because of the foreshortening. Because of the foreshortening uh, we can't see those smoother longer curves because everything is kind of uh, made shorter by, by our point of view obviously. And the same goes with the overall shape of that stream which is getting kind of smaller and narrower as we look into the distance. And now here around the tree at the, at the bottom on the left side I also want to have some more snow and I want to make it look like the lower part of the tree trunk is covered with snow uh, and uh, I'm going to make that part a little bit lighter. I want to make this lower portion uh, of the scene a bit lighter overall because that's the snow and it's supposed to be lighter than the background or the sky and those trees all the way back. And uh, here I'm just trying to cover this quickly and I'm going to blend this uh, with my finger and once I do that I'll start working on some details. So I'm going to try to put in a few details using a black colored pencil. So these are supposed to be like smaller, darker details in the snow, like for example, 
Uh, maybe a little bit of mud or stones uh, visible through the snow. Maybe even uh, a few blades of dry, dry grass or something like that. Who knows? Uh, but it's mostly, it's mostly just uh, a little bit of mud here and there that that you can see through the snow. And this is adding some interest. To the terrain, it's adding a little bit of texture to the terrain, it's making the terrain look more interesting and also, I think, more three dimensional. Another thing that I'm doing is I'm using this uh, Faber Castell uh, colored pencil on top of the uh, Kohinoor Joconda white pencil because I want to create some even lighter details on top of those, uh, let's say, very light gray ones. And this is creating a variation in value in the terrain, making some suggestions like the the, the terrain, the, that snowy terrain is uneven and like uh, there are some um, clumps of snow uh, which are kind of bulging out a little bit and which are a little bit lighter, uh, whereas uh, others are kind of deeper in the shadow or maybe facing away from the light source. So uh, a little bit of that variation in value will create the illusion like we're looking at a, a rough uh, snowy terrain. So uh, once, I've, uh, once I've done the lower part of the scene with that white pencil, now I can add a few more branches here and I can pretty much finish my tree. I can finish all of its branches and you can see uh, the this lower branch is especially a nice uh, detail this lower hanging branch is an especially nice detail because it's not only creating contrast uh, with those trees in the background but also with the snow in the background in the lower portion in the lower portion of my uh, of my scene <clears throat> right now I'm just uh, adding some finishing touches to the tree itself before I start working on the lower part of the train here where I'm going to be adding a lot of these darker details and defining the, the this stream a little bit more. So I added some lighter touches to the water because it's not frozen, it's supposed to be flowing so I want to make it look kind of reflective and <clears throat> maybe even add some suggestions of um, the movement of water in there and here around the sides I'm adding a little bit more shadow because I want to make it look like this part is a little bit more muddy and like these are a little bit more shadow here because the snow is kind of raised above the level of the water and maybe there's a little bit of mud and stones uh, around the sides here and on top of those darker shapes here and there, I'm adding some lighter shapes to make them look uh, more three-dimensional. Here I'm kind of trying to define the uh, that uh, shape of the river or the stream a little bit better so that it makes a little bit more sense. It's kind of winding like a snake. And I'm working around it, trying to define its edges a bit better while keeping in mind that it, it has to kind of disappear into the distance getting smaller and uh, smaller with these shapes uh, kind of more and more distorted and less defined because of the foreshortening. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm adding some more details in the foreground here, adding some random um, random details on the stream like maybe some stones or maybe some mud or maybe a few fallen branches or things like that maybe and then some darker details on this uh, right side uh, of the of the ground here on the right side of the stream again using the lighter pencil on top to create some variation in value in the terrain to make it look a little more rough and uh, three-dimensional like there are some lump lumps of snow sticking out maybe um, making everything look a little more three-dimensional 
and I'm adding some lighter details here on the stream to make the water look a little more realistic and lively I suppose and create some suggestions of the movement uh, of, the, uh, of the water and basically putting down some finishing touches on the stream and on the lower part of the scene because uh, the drawing is almost done. I'm going to add some uh, lighter value here in the middle. I wanted this to be just a little bit lighter and kind of refining uh, the shape of the stream a little bit more. So at this point I wanted to finish my drawing and I put my signature down in the lower left corner and I was ready to put my pencil down but after I sprayed the drawing with a fixative I got some slightly unpleasant effects because uh, the fixative created some uh, drops or darker spots uh, especially in that part of the drawing which I covered with the Joconda pencil uh, because that was a little bit uh, how should I put it less opaque maybe and then I decided to seize that opportunity and use that texture to create a snowy scene so I started adding a bunch of these snowflakes I wanted it to look I wanted it to look like it's snowing and uh, I thought that this would uh, really improve the appearance of my scene so it's kind of a good thing that the fixative didn't work quite as well as I wanted it and it ended up creating a texture that gave me an idea to create this uh, snowing scene but I had to add quite a few of these snowflakes to make it look believable and I had to vary their size and shape a little bit and I had to have enough density I just had to have enough of them which took a little bit of time but after that the drawing was done anyway I hope you like this scene and I want to thank you for watching I'm gonna see you in the next one but before I let you go don't forget to subscribe and give me a like and if you want to see longer videos and more content you should check out my Patreon. bye for now